guys, this is Edna with Squire Photography and today I'm going to teach you how to make a composite collage. So this is pretty easy and I'm going to tell you how I would normally do it without having to be as complicated as uh, it can be. So this image I shot with her standing in the same part of the wall without a tripod. You can see they're all wonky lines and it's kind of all wacky and I tried to keep the camera still but you can tell that there's definitely differences in each of the images are not static. It would be a lot easier if you had a tripod and even easier if you just set up the tripod and had her stand here against the wall and then had her go a couple of feet and then do another pose and then go another couple of feet and do another pose and go another couple of feet and do another pose until you get them all separate but in the same exact location without moving the camera. And then all you have to do is mask them and they'll each start popping up um, individually. But I didn't do it that way. I thought I would just put all of these together in a cute little collage, like just four pictures and a little four by six I thought would be super cute. But the more I thought about it, the more I wanted to do something like this. And I'm going to teach you how I do that. So... We are going to start with the bottom image that I chose to make this. I made this yesterday. We're going to try to make it as close as possible to this. So this bottom image is this one here. And you can tell that the lines are super weird. Like here, it's way off. So I'm going to just press Control A, Copy V. Or you can just press Control J, guys, either way. Uh, and then I'm going to transform this just a little bit so it's straighter. You pr can press Control H so you can get your guide. Now, just so you know, you can go to Edit, Preferences. Oh, let me press Enter. Sorry, guys. You can go to Edit, Preferences, Guides, Grids, and Slices. And you can tell Photoshop how many subdivisions you want. You can do four subdivisions. You can do one every two inch, every one inch, you can every three inch, whatever works best for you. I'm going to go with a grid line every three inches just for this particular image because it's a bunch of images together with one subdivision. I'm going to press OK. So that way you can start getting a little bit cleaner, straighter lines. So here I have uh, that top image. On. I'm going to bring in my layers palette. So here's the layer that I've copied. And again, you can just grab it and just drop it in this way. It doesn't matter how you do it. So I'm trying to get this one as straight as possible so that they come in together straight. So here we go. That looks pretty good. Of course, it's off because it's a wide angle lens. There's going to be some distortion, but we just want to get it pretty close. And that's pretty good. I'm going to I'm going to smash those all together, all those layers together by p pressing control shift E and you're, um, you're going to sandwich all those layers together. Now we're going to the next image and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to press, we're going to copy it by dragging it to this location over here, or we can do con control J and that also just copies it, whichever way you want to go. And we're going to press control T and we're going to make this one straight. Also, this one is actually pretty damn straight and it looks pretty good. And shift control E to merge all those layers together. Same thing here. We're going to press control H to look at our grid. We're going to copy that layer, press control T and just, we really just want to get those layers as straight as possible. That looks good. Shift control E again. So that's just one layer. Same thing here. I'm going to press control J to copy that layer. Press control H to look at the grid. And we want to press control T to transform. And here on the corners, you can see that it, you can move it around however you want, or you can go to the corners and transform it like this. See how it turns into like that little double sided arrow that's going up and to the left or here up and to the right. So we just want to get that pretty close. Straight wise. That looks good. That looks good. Same thing here. This one's way off. So control J, control H, and then control T and I'm sure on Mac everything is command, right? You guys 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's all command. That looks pretty good. Enter, and then again, shift control E or command shift E or however you guys do it on Mac. That looks really good. Same thing here, way off again, because I didn't use a tripod, so it's way better if you use a tripod. That looks pretty good. That looks really nice. Okay, and then shift control E again, and there you go. Now, they all look pretty straight now, so that'll make our job a little bit easier, and I'm gonna teach you how to get them all together in one image. So this image is going to be our base image and we are going to stretch our canvas. Now, because this image is the last image on the right hand side, we really only need to stretch the canvas to the left, right? We don't, we don't need any canvas to the right. We just need canvas to the left. So I am going to go to image. We're going to go to canvas size, which is alt control C and here you can see that you have a bunch of little arrows if I wanted to stretch the canvas to the right then I would click on that left arrow and you see how it's saying oh I'm gonna stretch it this way but because I want to stretch it to the left I'm gonna click on this right arrow and it's saying I'm gonna stretch you this way we're not gonna mess with the height at all we're just gonna go with the width and I'm gonna go with a percentage of 300 that's probably way too big but we can cut it down at that point. Now here we have all of that extra canvas. It doesn't matter what color you need. You know, you could have made your canvas image canvas size. You could have made it here in the background color. You can make it white if you want, if it helps you see it better. Whatever color you want doesn't matter. Again, we'll do 300. Oops, sorry guys, that was my mistake. So we're going this way, we're going to percentage and we're going to width. There you go. So that shows you all the additional canvas that we added. Now we're gonna add them one by one and drop them in. So we're gonna go Control A, that's all, Control C for copy, Control W to close it. And we're gonna say, nope, I don't need to save it. And we're gonna press Control V. That just added it in. Now we just sort of wanna drop it in kind of a on top of where we think this image would go, right? So somewhere maybe right around there. It doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of around where you think it, it'll go next. Same thing with the next image, Control A, Control C, Control W. Nope, I don't need to save it. Press Control V for paste. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're just gonna semi drop it in where we think it belongs. Again, control all, control C, so A, C. I just hold my finger on control and press A, C, W, just so you guys know. A, C, W. No, control V. And we'll kind of drop that one where we think it goes. Same thing here, control A, C, W, no, V. That one kind of, I guess, there. I'm not really sure where, but we'll fix them right now. And now this one, control A, C, W, Press no, and then control V, and we'll put that one in around there. Now, I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit by pre pressing control plus. And we're gonna start lowering the opacity of all of these images so we can see the ones below them. So layer by layer, lower the opacity. I'm gonna say about 50%, and you can go a little lower if you want, until you see all of the layers. Here's all of the layers at a lower opacity. Now here, I normally keep my auto select on up here on the top left hand corner, but today we're gonna remove it because we wanna actually work on each of these layers. So let's zoom in. And I'm pressing space bar to move. And I'm gonna start with this top, this bottom layer looks great. That's gonna be our base layer. Now I'm gonna go to layer one, which is this layer here and I am going to line up the little squares. You see these little squares right here, guys? I'm lining these up, okay? So this bottom layer, I want it lined up here. So I don't know which, I'm gonna remove the little eyeball on all of the layers except for the two that I'm using. So that looks pretty good. Now you see how this is a little bit off? You see how that's a little bit off right there? 
I'm not going to worry about that too much. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, I'm just wanting to get these that are closest together, the ones that are closest together to each other as straight as possible. Now you can always press control T at this point and kind of rotate it if you feel like it's off to get it closer, but it just needs to be close enough. Bring in that next layer and we're going to do the same thing. Oop, sorry guys. Layer two, same thing here. That looks pretty good right around there. That looks pretty good. And then bring in the next layer. You just click on that little eyeball. Oop, sorry guys, again, my fault. Here we go. That looks pretty good, right? You can always tweak it with your arrows too on your keyboard. That looks pretty good, I think. Next layer, little eyeball, and layer four we're dealing with now. That looks pretty good also. And it's not going to be perfect, guys, because it was a wide-angle lens. And if it was a 50, it'd probably be really close. But because it was a wide angle lens, you're going to get a little bit of like tweaking on the edges and these, you know, the little stretching on the edges. So it's not going to be perfect, but just try to get close. Now we're going to layer five. Same thing. I think that looks pretty good. All right. I think all of that is looking pretty good at this point. So that already gives you an idea of how it's going to look. And we can bring back the opacity to 100% to all the layers if you want. Now we're going to start masking. So we're going to start with this top layer, layer five, and we're going to add a mask right here. You see this little rectangle that looks that has a circle in it? This is a mask. If you are still using your eraser function on Photoshop, after learning this, you will never use your eraser function again. So we could easily have not used a layer mask and just erased, erased, erased. And then at some point you would have realized that, oh my God, I lost a hand somewhere or something happened and you can't go back. With a layer mask, you can always go back. Black is removing and white is keeping. So right now we have all white, which means this whole image is showing. But we're going to take our brush. We're going to go to the softest brush and we're going to be at 100% opacity with a 100% flow. And we are going to start painting out what we don't want in this area. So here we go. See that? Just like that. Everything to the left of her on this photo, we are removing. Okay? Everything. So you can see the entire rest of the image. There you go. We're going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit closer. There we go. Now you can press X. See how, what X does over here with the black and the white? X. So you're going to want white and then we can go st start in and just adding where you want to see. I just want to kind of like make sure that that corner looks clean. Everything else looks really good. If we lost a little bit of her hand like this, then we can always press X and bring it back. Super easy. See? Now we're going to do the same thing with the next layer. We're going to click on layer four. We're going to add a layer mask and we're going to press X to go to black and we're going to start painting the next subject in right here, you see? And because this this is, wasn't perfect, I'm gonna take it right up to the edge of that square so it just looks just right, see? And I can go right up to the edge of that square and bring that all back. 
and everything from this point forward we want to erase because the next layer is going to come out here right so we want to erase up until that point right there right there i don't know if you guys can see my mouse maybe i'll let me get my version of Photoshop gets a little bit weird and the cursor sometimes just swap out. So precise, it's on precise right now, but it just weirdly swaps out once in a while. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm removing everything on this side so that I can bring it in. I can bring the other little Burkenda in. Her name is Burkenda. She's amazing. She's so much fun. And I thought this image just totally embodied her spirit. So now we're going to go to layer three and do the same thing. We're going to add that layer mask. We're going to go to X or make sure we're on black. And we're going to paint in the next Burkenda. And you'll notice I'm going to this edge here just so it gives us a little bit of continuity and there's not like some weird wonky line. So right up to here. Oh, I'm going to press X. See how this line kind of started to come in? I want that line to stay part of this mask. So that keeps your lines pretty clean and consistent. Good. I think I've removed everything from that point from her body over. Good. I can always make my brush bigger and Kind of go over it in big strokes. Now I'm going to go to the next mask, layer two, do the same thing, and you'll just make sure you're on black. And lo and behold, like magic, here she comes. So this one is a little bit off. I can see it right away. It's too, t you see how these lines aren't matching? So right now we're just going to press Control T. Sorry guys, wrong layer. Layer one, Control T drop her down a little bit there we go she just matched up miraculously just like that but we're still working on layer two on the mask make sure you click on the mask not on the photo on the mask okay otherwise you're going to be drawing right into that right into that photograph just like that these lined up really beautifully i don't even have to worry about much really nice Beautiful. Okay, perfect. All right, it looks like all of that mask is done. Now we're going to go to layer one, add a mask exactly the same way. Make sure you're on black and start painting Burkenda in. Now this one's off too. You see that line? Yep. So press Control T and drop her down just a little. I would, sorry guys, wrong layer again. Control T. Oh, this one's locked up. So I'm going to make a copy of it and use the next layer up. So control T and just use my arrow keys just to line her up perfectly with the one before. Press enter and I'm back up to layer one on the mask. I've got the brush on and we are removing away. There we go. Looks really nice. I think that that's pretty damn good. That already got us to a pretty good place here. Now, right, all the lines look pretty good. Now we can crop it. So I'm going to go from like right about here to right about here. So we can get rid of all of this stuff down here anything that doesn't line up really well. I'm going to go to image, crop, perfect. So now we can make little adjustments. I press control D to remove that mark, the marching ants. If you 
feel like you need to make any adjustments, this is the time to do it. I think it looks pretty damn good. Here we have a couple of really weird lines at the bottom. So let's see where they're coming from. All right, here we go. So let's remove some of this. We can also press control T and see if we can X. So there's probably, you see here how this is probably coming from over here. So let's see. Oops. Sorry guys. All right. I make mistakes all the time. So you guys know. So you can always just go control Z, control Z until you find where you last left off. There we go. Let's see. And we want to kind of wonky that off. There we go. That works. X and you're just smoothing out. You're just pressing X and X and X until you find what you like. That looks pretty good. Okay. That doesn't look too bad right there. I can live with that. So now at this point, I would definitely save. You should always save as you're going. It's just a good idea. So press control S and I'm going to save it as a PSD. So you can always go back to this point and you can now merge them all together by pressing control shift E. Now they're all merged. And then at this point you can start making like corrections all together. Now, if you shot them all at the same in the same lighting condition, with the same camera settings, they should all be pretty close to the same. So I wanted to add a little contrast, maybe add a little bit of warmth, maybe add a little tiny bit of red. I'd go a little bit brighter. That's just me. I like that. That's super cute. All right, guys. So this is it. That's how you make a little composite collage using uh, the layer mask. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. As a matter of fact, just comment for me and do me a favor. For some reason, YouTube kicks these up on their search engine when there's a lot of comments. So leave a comment. Love it, hate it. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I'm just trying to teach you what I do every day, guys. So this is the one that I made yesterday. I went in and like retouched her legs a little bit, smoothed everything out because I like everything to look, you know, super pro. But this is the one we made today without putting any more work into it. I still think it looks super adorable. And um, if you guys have any questions or you want any particular videos in Photoshop tutorials or even anything having to do with photography at all, guys, I am an extensively published award-winning photographer. I've been shooting for over 25 years professionally. If there's anything that you guys want to know about any, pretty much any type of photography, let me know. I do everything. Literally, uh, I do weddings, portraits, babies, newborns, sexy, high school seniors, hotels, food, commercial, everything. So if there's anything that you guys want to know, just let me know. Otherwise, please like comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and have a great day.